I don't speak for everybody in the black community, but let me tell you why some of the black people are rallying behind Kyrie and Kanye. It says that because when blacks have a misstep, it seems like we suffer the harshest penalties. It seems like other groups offend blacks okay. and they never suffer the penalty that Kyrie and Kanye have suffered. It seems like to us, a lot of us, not all, a lot, some of us, a large portion of us is that black are bound by shackles. We're held more accountable for our actions and our words where our counterparts are with cobwebs. They're easily brushed aside. Shannon, he apologized. He or she said they were sorry. Why can't we get the same benefit of the doubt? Kyrie was wrong, but I believe Kyrie was wrong, but I also can believe the punishment was excessive. After what President Trump has said about the American Jews versus the, uh, the Israeli Jews and what he's tweeted and what he's posted, and he ain't got canceled yet. So don't give me that, that if this would have happened, if that would have happened, because we've seen in instances when they have done things, they never been canceled. And that's what we do. They look and they cancel us. No questions asked. There's not enough apology. Kyrie can get on his bending knee. He can come to the people in the most humble way he know how. Bow head, humble heart, and bent knee. And that's still not enough for some. Man, I don't know what happened in the past few days, man. Man, everybody doing a 180 spin, bro. Everybody was piling on Kyrie, dog piling on Kyrie, trying to stomp Kyrie out. Now everybody's switching sides and switching teams, man. Let's talk about it. But yeah, man, Shannon Sharp says he's surprised by the fact that other groups, men from other races, men from other, you know, religious backgrounds, they can get away with certain things that a black man can never get away with. Well, like I've said in previous videos, do those men have to answer the black men for their daily bread? Do those men have to answer the black men in order to feed their families? No, I don't think so. So why would those groups be beholden to black men? But if you put the equation in reverse, do black men as a collective by and large have to answer to men from other groups? The answer would be yes. So of course those men would be able to lay the hammer down on you, put the boot on your neck, disrespect you. Yeah, for sure. They can get away with a lot because you have to answer to them for your daily bread. As a collective, by and large, I know we all don't, but yes, by and large, yes, you do. So, of course, there are certain things you won't be able to do. There are certain things you won't be able to say. You'll have to operate within the boundaries that are set for you until you decide to flip the table and create your own playing field. Create your own boundaries, create your own set of rules, create your own terms of conditions where you are the master of the field. Yes, until black men do that as a collective, we are going to live with this reality. Now, it seems like brothers like LeBron James, Shannon Sharp, have began to you know waver switch sides because of i don't know public pressure maybe they're looking in the comment section the twitter mentions they see that you know the black people who subscribe to you know black hebrew israelite ideology they own their head they applying pressure and a lot of these guys their livelihood it depends on how the public sees them not only do they have to answer to their white bosses but they also have to make sure that the public is also on their side so the ratings remain high because if people stop tuning into their shows for something they did or something they said they can also lose their job so these guys are walking a tight rope right guys like shannon sharp they have to appease their white bosses make them happy but they also have to appease the public to make sure the ratings stay high, make sure the profits and the advertisements stay high. So these guys have a terrible balancing act to perform. You know, they got they got to make white people and black people happy. Now, I don't know how you can do that. Man, listen, you're going to take years off your life stressing yourself out like that. Listen, I've been saying it and I'm going to keep saying it. The reason those other groups of men can get away with certain things while black people can't is because they do not answer to you. They do not work for you. They do not depend on you to feed themselves and feed their children. And one day that can change. But as of right now, that's not the case. So until black men get into positions of power, not even just within our own communities, but also above other communities as well, the power dynamics will remain the same. Kyrie is getting punished to this degree because he is a subordinate. He is an employee of the National Basketball Association. If Kyrie was just a guy who owned the local, you know, coffee shop or a guy who owned the local juice bar importing, you know, fruits from the Caribbean or something like that. Like, listen, if he was just a regular guy, regular entrepreneur out of the way, didn't work for nobody, then he would be able to go on his social media, share whatever DVD link he wanted to share, share whatever information he wanted to share, say whatever he wanted to say on social media. But because Kyrie and his likeness is attached to the National Basketball Association, Bro, there's terms and conditions that you got to operate in. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, like I said in my last video, Kyrie, it's time to go independent, my man. Shannon, it's time to go independent, my man. You can do the same thing too. You know, I know it's comfortable. I know the infrastructure is already set up. All you got to do is just come in, do your job, get a paycheck, you good. But listen, if you want that power, if you want that leeway, if you want that same privilege that other groups got, then you have to follow their example. Those other groups, 
They set up that show that you are on. Yes, they provided the infrastructure of which they plugged you in. They provided the infrastructure when you're a professional sports player to plug you in. They provided the infrastructure to Kyrie to plug him in and give him millions of dollars. There's a certain power dynamic at play. And until that switches and you become the one cutting the checks, you become the one giving out the deals, then the power dynamic will remain in play. So you have to go from the subordinate to the superior. You have to go from the inferior to the boss. You have to go to the one receiving the check to the one cutting the check. And people will offer that extension of grace to you. People will offer that extension of leeway to you. People won't jump down your throat. People won't try to take your head off anytime you make a small mistake because they'll have a built in respect for you. Because the Jewish men have established their infrastructure and their position of power in the world. And I don't say that as a negative thing. I don't want the people at YouTube to think I'm pushing anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. When I say that, I say that to pay homage to what those men have built and that black men should do the same, right? Because those men did not build everything they built to harm other people. They built what they built to enrich themselves and their children and their families, right? Everything they did, we can do the same. Those men are human just like us. They go to the bathroom, they take a dump just like us. They drink water just like us. They got blood pumping through their veins just like us. They got a brain, two legs, two arms just like us. They're not from Mars. They're not from Jupiter. They're from the Earth. Everything they did, everything they built, everything they established for their people, we can do the same for our people. Nobody's going to stop us from doing that. Nobody's going to stop you from coming together with your people, building schools for your people, creating a curriculum for your people, starting businesses for your people, employing your people, putting your people on, giving your people loans. Nobody's going to stop you from doing that. Nobody's going to arrest you if you do that. So we can sit on the sidelines and complain that certain people might have certain privileges that we don't. But until we decide to do what they've done, then we cannot complain that we don't have what they have. We haven't built what they've built. We haven't generated the money that they generated. So until we do the same and we still don't have those privileges, then we can complain and be like, oh, damn, we have $10 billion. But how come that guy with $10 billion, you know, he has more privilege and power than me? No. When you get that money, when you start cutting the checks, when you start giving out jobs, when you create the schools, when you take control of your community from top to bottom, inside and out. Listen, you will have the same power. You will have the same influence. You will have the same respect. You will have the same leverage. All right. We are trying to go around the obvious. It's like you want the same respect as the Jewish people, but you don't want to build the same amount of hospitals and businesses and schools and bakeries and grocery stores, etc., etc., as the Jewish people. The same amount of record labels, etc., etc., as the Jewish people. All right. Listen, you got to put in the work. You got to put in the grind. You got to put in the time and you got to build it from the ground up each generation, each generation. They did not build their power in one single day or one single week. Nah, bro. When you look at how they came up, it went like this. All right. One guy started a business with his brother. And then he passed down the business to his nephew. And then the nephew took the business to a higher level. He passed it down to his son. And now it's a billion dollar entity. And now everybody knows the name. Everybody respects the family name. It was a generational thing, bro. When you study how certain businesses were built by certain families, it wasn't just they woke up one day and they just had the power, bro. This is a generational thing. Like when you see the head of Universal Music Group, you see that he's putting his son on. Now his son is going to be a powerful exec. His son already had, you know, platinum selling artists under his name without making one single song that's how you get put on you know what i mean that's how you get put on bro you got to start a business you know with your family or your homies then they pass it down to their son their nephews and the next generation you pass them the baton they carry the torch right that's how it goes that's how it goes you might not live to see the power that you desire to have but guess what your grandchildren are gonna look back and they're gonna be like man my grandfather such and such you know he built the foundation he laid the first bricks he started that business back in you know what i mean 2022 and now it's 2075 and now look at us you know we up 40 billion you know what i mean we up 50 billion you know everybody knows the name in the industry the name rings bells everybody respect us that's how it is bro that's how it is bro when you look at these powerful families, these powerful entities, these powerful names, it's a generational thing. Back to that one ancestor that took the leap of faith and built that first business, built that first foundation, built that first entity, and they carried the torch generation to generation. With black people, our thing is we don't continue things generation to generation, right? In order to have that same amount of leverage, power, and influence, we have to make a hundred year plan, a long term plan. And our grandkids are going to thank us for that. And guess what? When we get into the position of power, everybody is going to be hating on us. The same way y'all got the conspiracy theories for the Jewish people, Israel, Mossad. Everybody's going to be talking about us, man. Everybody's going to be like, man, you say anything about a black man, man. You're going to lose your job, man. You're going to lose your house. That is how we got to have it, bro. That is how we want it to be. We got to put in the work and then we got to make sure we raise our children from a young age so we can pass the baton and they don't fumble the bag. Right. So listen, man. 
It's your boy Nefakari Dessaline back in the building. Yes, indeed. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applaud it. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down a generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling attention. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Pay for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hour with it, wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play all my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so elite. Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.